Today I want to talk to you about failure, one of the biggest, ugliest, most painful, and ultimately necessary failures of my filmmaking career. And even though this happened years ago, it still stings today. In my entire career, it's probably the single biggest disappointment I've ever had. It was a story about violence, corruption, and love in the hills of southern Mexico, and honestly, it should have been an amazing project. Except that I didn't do enough prep work, and it ended up costing us everything. I spent months filming and editing the story, and I traveled to New York, twice uh, on my own expense trying to find a home for this project but in the end nothing happened and it just like lives behind a Vimeo link somewhere and no one sees it. The story deserved better than that and I failed it. Here's why and how you can make sure that doesn't happen to you. Hey guys, welcome back, and if you're new here, my name is Luke Forsyth, documentary cinematographer and filmmaker, and on this channel, I teach the skills I've learned over 10 years working in the documentary industry. Today I'm going to tell you how I learned the hard way about the dangers of not doing enough pre-production, and how those lessons have helped me come up with a three-step process that I go through for all my new projects. I think of these as the foundational pillars that the rest of the project will stand on, and since I've started taking them seriously, I've become a much more intentional filmmaker. First, let me give you some background here. If you don't know me, I used to live in Mexico City for a few years, and during that time I worked on a lot of projects relating to the drug cartels and the violence that spread across Mexico. While working on a show called The Trade, I met a guy named Mario who was the subject of one of the episodes. Um, I only spent about two days with him, but that was enough. I knew right away that I wanted to get to know him and tell his story. I'll give you the basic version here, and that's that Mario's brother was kidnapped one day on his way home from work work and he never came back. Mario wanted answers obviously and so every day before he went to work he would search the hills outside of his village looking for evidence. He still hasn't found his brother but since then he's been involved in locating over 200 bodies and has flown all over the country to help others in their own searches for missing loved ones. It's an extremely powerful story and Mario was such a sweet guy I really wanted to help spread awareness of what he'd been through and what he was doing. But just having an idea for a documentary isn't enough you actually have to go out and make the thing. So how do you take an idea and turn it into something real? When I started working on Mario's story, my filmmaking partner and I had a lot of coffee meetings and talked about big picture ideals for hours. But after months, we still hadn't actually found the time to go out and shoot with Mario. And the problem starts with the very concept of finding time. If you want a documentary to actually happen, you don't find time, you make time. And that leads me to the first pillar of my pre-production process, make a schedule. Making a schedule helps in a bunch of ways. Firstly, it makes the project official and creates a sense of commitment. The difference between, hey, let's go make this documentary sometime next month and we're shooting this documentary for five days from the 5th to the 11th next month is huge. Commit things to your calendar and you will have a much higher chance of seeing them through. A good schedule shouldn't just cover shoot days, but delivery dates as well. Productions follow Parkinson's law, which is the one that says task expand to fill the time you give them. So if you just say, we'll finish it when it's done, you're asking for a project to drag on and on and never see the light of day. Setting deadlines helps everyone stay focused and on pace, and it will increase the probability that you actually finish what you started by a lot. Trust me. But a great schedule is meaningless unless you have the money to pull it off. Production is expensive, and there is no point in scheduling a shoot in Paris if you don't have the cash for it. And that's another way schedules help you out. They allow you to see the pieces of the shoot laid out in terms of total days and distances so that you know what it's gonna cost. Once you have a schedule in place, you might find that suddenly your underwater scene in Costa Rica doesn't seem as important. Even more important than scheduling your shoot days and setting deadlines is deciding on what you're gonna shoot. When I heard Mario's story, I was so caught up with the emotion and the power of his story that I thought the story would tell itself. When Jordi and I actually made it down to Guerrero to shoot with him, we just rolled cameras on everything that we did for three days without really thinking over what we needed in order to tell his story. We left Mario's place thinking we'd gotten amazing stuff, and the visuals were great, but as soon as we started editing, we realized that we were missing important information that the story didn't really make sense. And that's the second pillar of documentary pre-production, write a script. It might sound weird to think of scripting a documentary because after all, aren't we supposed to be documenting real life? I mean, how can you script that? But a script in documentary isn't the same as it is in Hollywood where the dialogue is written in advance. A doc script is your take on what an ideal version of the script could look like based on the research you've done to that point. If you start filming and realize that you misunderstood something important or that things play out differently than you wrote in the script, then you should absolutely allow things to unfold naturally. The script isn't to set the narrative, it's to give you something to fall back on when you don't know what else to do. 
A good script will also help you to see if you have a story or just a topic. A story has a beginning, a middle, and an end, and a topic doesn't. Frodo being called away from the Shire, traveling across Middle-earth, and finally destroying the ring is a story. Frodo went on a journey, he faced some obstacles, he overcame them, and he returned home a changed little man. Now the flip side of that is a movie about a powerful and dangerous ring that exists in Middle-earth might sound like an interesting topic, but just that in itself, it isn't a story. Now if the movie didn't follow Frodo on this journey and just kind of said that a dangerous and powerful ring existed in Middle-earth, it's kind of an interesting topic, but that's not a story. This was our mistake when we started working with Mario. We had an extremely interesting topic, but since we didn't write a script, we had no sense of where the story was supposed to begin or end, and so we really didn't know what moments we needed to capture in order to make it work. We ended up with a lot of powerful moments, but we weren't really able to show what it is that Mario wanted from all this or how he changed as a result. When I took our edit to New York to show editors and producers who had all expressed an interest before, they all said the same thing, which is, this is really interesting, but it's not a story. Unsurprising Surprisingly, no one bought it. If we'd just taken the time to write a rough script, we would have seen the structural problems from the beginning. Now, there's so much to scripting that I'm not going to go into it too deeply here, but comment down below if you'd like to see me do a full video on how to make a documentary script. Nowadays, I always write a script for every new documentary project, and it has helped me so much. I can't overstate this. Write a script even if you don't think you'll follow it. You'll be surprised how often it helps you stay on track. So once you've got your ideal story points down, you actually need to film the thing. There are so many ways to shoot a documentary, from super rough, verite, shoulder style shooting like in Cartel Land, to really stylized recreation creations like The Art of Killing, that you need to be intentional from the outset about what you want your film to look like. When Jordy and I went to shoot with Mario, we never really discussed the general aesthetic we were going for, and I think we both just kind of assumed that we were on the same page. But later, when we combined the footage, we realized that we actually hadn't been shooting exactly the same way, and some of the scenes were tough to edit together. So for example, sometimes I'd be shooting uh, for a dark and moody look while Jordy imagined something much brighter, or I was getting tripod shots and he was doing almost all handheld. Um, whatever the reason, the result was that the shoot didn't really match and it was hard to make scenes out of it. All of this could have been avoided if we'd taken the time to establish some visual references and agree on a unified shooting style before we started. And that's the third and final pillar of my documentary pre-production process. Make a mood board. A mood board, or a deck, or whatever you want to call it, is basically a bunch of different visuals that you gather together in one place to give you an idea of a project's overall style and look. You can take them from anywhere, from movies, commercials, still photos, anything that fits what your vision is for the final project can go in your mood board. You might think it's enough to have all these ideas in your head, but trust me, it's so much better to have them physically gathered in one place that you can then go back to and consult and look at anytime you get stuck. If you run into any doubts on how to film a scene, just open up your mood board and remember the master plan. There are a ton of ways to make a mood board and any of them will work. You could dump a bunch of photos into Evernote or like even create a Pinterest board or cut out actual photos from magazines and pin them on the wall if you want to go old school. There is no perfect method. I'm currently using an app called Milanote that I heard through Danny Givertz's channel. Danny, I'm sorry if I'm saying your last name wrong. I love your videos, great job, and thanks for tuning me on to this. Milanote is a great way to make a mood board. So Milanote is really just an elegant way of making a board by allowing you to gather references in one place with a really nice design and some well thought out features. Features. You can use things like columns and arrows to connect thoughts together, and you can group a bunch of ideas together to help you organize it all in your brain. Milanote allows you to use things like columns and arrows to link things together and gather them all in one place. So if I decided that all my night shots on this shoot are going to be really dark and moody and all my day scenes will be really hot and overexposed, I can put them into two different columns. Or if I want to show how the shoot is connected to a particular subject, I could drop a link to it and then connect it with an arrow. It's a really intuitive and visually attractive way to organize information and for me, it's one of the best new tools out there. There's a ton of features on Milanote and this video is not sponsored. I just think it works really well and I've been loving it so far. But you totally do not need a fancy app to do this, so please don't get so caught up in the tools that you skip this step altogether. So there you have it. Those are my three foundational pillars for planning a documentary. With all of those things, I wanna mention that you should only use them as guiding principles. They're not ironclad rules that you have to follow to the letter. The story is king in documentary, and if you need to change your plans on the fly, you totally should. 
I also didn't really touch on budgeting, mostly because people's budgets can vary so much and I wanted to keep this video to a reasonable length, but budgets are really important and I will be working on a separate video about that soon. I do these three things for every documentary project I start before I shoot a single frame, and honestly it has helped me so much in avoiding the mistakes I made with Mario's film. I still feel bad that my lack of preparation meant we didn't do his story justice, but if I would just taken the time to do better pre-production, I don't think any of that would have happened, and since then I've always made it a project. Priority. If you want to hear more about Mario's story and what I learned from it as a filmmaker, check out this other video I made about the whole experience. It's about how that project made me feel like a big failure, but also how I grew from it. As much as it hurt at the time, I am much better off today because of it. See ya!